one of the major problems with genomics right now is the amount of data that's generated is near overwhelming. The major problem with trying to identify key hypotheses is really trying to wave through the noise, trying to identify which one of the measurements that you take and the data points that you gather are actually relevant. The Center for Bioinformatics and Functional Genomics is largely a research center. And what it does is provide cutting edge technologies in genomics, computational biology, and in functional analysis of some of the genetic variation that we see in the human population. But what this really provides is an opportunity for somewhere like CEDARS to be able to tap into the clinical opportunities there and the other research opportunities that may develop from the Centre for Bioinformatics and Functional Genomics and its continued advancement in understanding disease etiology. In order to really study a disease or a phenotype, what you need are models that you can go and manipulate. These have been relatively lacking, I'd say, for a long period of time, um, and we're only really now starting to develop these models for the disease being studied. In the past, we used to focus on very small sample sizes in our genetic studies. However, we realized that, that only is a snapshot of a population. And so to truly understand how genetics and genomics contributes to human health, we have to actually look at this in the general population. We have to look at the DNA blueprint of thousands, hundreds of thousands of individuals and compare them. And by comparing them, then we can really truly understand why different individuals uh, either have greater risk of disease or respond better to different treatments. Now that we have the ability to sequence every patient that comes through CEDARS, it allows us to discover new possible clinical biomarkers in the disease, it gives us more information of what's causing the disease in this patient to apply later to other patients coming through the door or through clinical trials and personalized treatment tailor-made to the person having the specific variation or genetic mutation that we've now identified in their genomic sequence. The Center for Bioinformatics and Functional Genomics is really crucial to driving for precision health or personalized medicine. We regard it as a very integral part of the whole setup uh, to help us achieve our aims in that area. The group will be generating multi-omic data, will be interpreting it, and very, very importantly, will be helping us implement it, so bridging that final gap of getting this research through to clinical practice. One of the most critical ways that I think about omic technologies changing cancer medicine is really in the development of tests based on omic discoveries that can actually profile patient tumors and then based on that profiling develop a test that will assign patients to specific and precision therapies. This whole area is a very active area of investigation in the Cedar sinai Cancer Center and uh, obviously in collaboration with BFG. Oncologists who's uh, cared for many women and patients with cancer, it's been a long time challenge to better understand why some patients get cancer and others don't, why some patients survive and others don't. The collaborations and science we're doing at the center is finally giving us some rational understanding of how to approach these diseases. I think the future will allow us to understand who's at greatest risk, why they're at greatest risk, what we can target to reduce those risks. To me, the gold ring that I want to grab is not a cure, it's really prevention. In 20 to 30 years, everyone will have their genome sequenced at birth. They'll have that data attached to electronic medical records. They'll carry it around on whatever the current edition of a iPhone is. Um, in addition to that, they'll have proteomic data. We'll understand their microbiome. You, and we'll understand the dynamics of that. So people are talking about you wake up in the morning, you breathe on your mirror in your uh, bathroom and that gives a readout of what your gut microbiome is for that day. Therefore you may want to personalize based on that the dose of drugs you're taking, what medications you should be taking, what you should be eating for your diet and so on. In the future our ability to define the genetic fingerprint of every individual 
is going to tell us the information that we need to know about that individual, about their lifestyle, about their risk factors. It's going to tell us about the sort of information that we need to know to understand their response to a specific treatment. So in the future, in the general population, this is going to have a massive impact on reducing mortality from a multitude of different diseases, as well as reducing the incidence of disease because we now know what sort of genetics contributes to their risk.